Lord be with you. Welcome everyone to our Sunday morning worship service on this beautiful rainy Sunday. Yes, yes, and may it continue for a little while. Um, I'd like to begin my announcements this morning. Um, it's a real simple one. Welcome home, Beth. Yeah. yeah. We're always, always blessed when someone can come, and especially Beth, and actually play live for us. Uh, but also leads me to uh, remind me of something that I do not do often enough, and that is to acknowledge and to thank that young lady up there in the balcony, Lauren, who, when someone isn't here, Lauren's always here. And she's always playing the music, and she's taking care of the camera, and throughout all of this, whether it's live music or whether it's recorded, we are truly blessed here as a church to have these types of gifts. So, for Lauren, thank you. Okay, I have just a few announcements I'd like to share. Uh, you'll notice there's some easels up out in the narthex this morning, and we are getting prepared to redo our church directory. So, if you're in there, take some time after worship to walk up and verify that the information is accurate, and then you can write down or, and give me or lay it on uh, the, the desk in the office, any changes that you want made to that. If you go to the directory and you're not in the directory, and you want to be in the directory as a member, associate member, or friend of this church, please just simply make sure that we have that information and we will add you to the church directory as is appropriate. But please do take a moment to just take a look at that when you leave. We have a firm date now set for our big event, what I call our big event anyway, during the summer because it includes pie. Uh, and that's our pie and ice cream um, fundraiser, and we're going to celebrate that on Saturday, July 29th. That's also in your worship guide as well. Uh, it starts at 11 a.m., and there will be signs, posters up throughout town. It'll be on the website. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be everywhere that it can be or needs to be, but please understand it's wonderful fellowship. We don't serve just pie and ice cream, but we actually offer a full, complete meal so you can come and just sit and relax that day. But all are welcome and bring a friend. Uh, I just wanted to give a, a, just a quick update on our Wednesday evening service because, you know, change often takes time. Uh, but it seems to be well received. Uh, and I'm not going to encourage someone to come to Wednesday night if you're already coming to Sunday, all right? But we all know people in our town and around who get quite involved, especially this time of the year, if you have anything to do with hospitality and tourism, which is our industry, all right, and find it time to, hard to get to church on Sunday morning. And that's what the Wednesday evening service is for. And just so you understand, the Wednesday evening service is the same service of the Sunday coming. So in other words, the folks that were here on Wednesday night basically heard the same lessons you're going to hear today. All right? But for all those that you know that might enjoy, okay, and look forward to something like that at a little different time, it's at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. That's all the announcements that I have for this morning. Is there anyone here this morning that has something they'd like to share where our church family is concerned or our community? Very well. If you, yes. Oh, yeah, today. Oh, yeah, I, yeah thank you. Yeah, I forgot that. I forgot to write that down. In your worship guide today, we have the song, Let Us Break Bread Together. We sing that while the Lord's table is being prepared and while we receive our offering. Because Beth is here today, okay, the choir has prepared a song that will be sung in place of that hymn, and then, and then, after that, after the choir is done, then we will receive our offering, and we will prepare the Lord's table, and Beth has said she's got plenty of what I call mood music <laughs> to play while that is taking place. So there's just a little change. Um, also, for whatever reason, okay, I want you to know that as long as Beth is playing the clavinova, what it lists for the number of hymns, the verse numbers at the top of the page, you can forget about it. We're singing them all. 
Okay, so you can forget about that too. Everything changed this morning when Beth walked in. So it was worked out really well. All right. For all those that are worshiping with us today that are guests, that are visiting, the worship guide that you were given when you came in the narthex contains everything that you need for worship. It's all in order. It's all there. It also doubles as our bulletin, our announcement sheet, and our prayer concerns, and we redo this every week. So if there's something in there that you want to take home that, that catches your eye or you want to write it down on the calendar, please feel free to take it with you as we only recycle them after worship. And as always, when we gather at Shepherd of the Lakes, we celebrate Holy Communion. And if you are worshiping with us today and you wish to commune, we want you to know that you are welcome to the Lord's table here. We will commune one half the church at a time. You will come forward and receive the host from me, and then moving right or left, whichever side we're doing first, you can either receive the wine by dipping the host into the chalice, thereby receiving both elements at the same time, or if you wish, you may receive the wine by individual glass, where as you can see, there is also a waste bend on each side of the sanctuary for your glass when you're done. Also, grape juice is offered in the individual glasses clearly marked, and grape juice is also offered as an alternative in the chalice in the small chamber, and we have gluten-free wafers available as well for those people in need of that. So, but the point being is, is that we celebrate Holy Communion when we gather, and when we gather, all are welcome to the Lord's table. So that's all the announcements that I have for today. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship a gracious and loving God. begin our service this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved the neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. Glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song today. How firm a foundation, ELW 796. Again, we will sing all four verses, and I invite you to stand as you are comfortable.
calls us orphans. When the world leads us astray, come, Holy Spirit, call us home. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have empowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him, or speak any more of his name... Then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary and holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering. Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our refuge on, revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble 
and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today on page 11 is Psalm 69, and we'll read this responsively. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I put on sackcloth also and became a, wor- a byword among them. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set. O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Our second reading today is from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin, but we have died with Christ. We believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you're comfortable for the gospel. said to the twelve, The disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. But if they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they align those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? 
Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart, apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more valuable than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I started to think about this, and I think it was probably close to close to 30, 35 years, the first time I was confronted with this text. I was supplying at a local church while their pastor was on vacation, and I read this text, so I called the pastor of the church, knowing that they knew their congregation well, and I said, what do I do with this? And her name was Pastor Lori, and Pastor Lori said, Bill, probably preach on the Psalms. Well, I wasn't smart enough, nor am I today. So together we will journey down and we will look for the good news in today's text. Speaking only for myself, growing up, especially when you hit high school, you want to be part of the gang. You want to be crew, the part of the crew. You want to be cool. You don't want to have enemies. You want everybody to like you. Now, that's a fine thing, but what happens as a rule is, is you usually end up doing or saying something that you regret later. Or for one reason or another gets you in trouble, and then you have to fess up to it somewhere else. And yes, it's confession. Your pastor did end up often in the principal's office. But these are all things that you learn that right is right regardless of the consequences of it. At a young age, I never considered myself a bully. But at a young age, I pretty could have qualified as one. When I got to high school, I realized that everybody there was pretty much bigger, stronger, and faster than me. So I learned the hard way that that was not where you wanted to be. But yet became a staunch defender of those that were taken advantage of and those that were bullied, which at times made me extremely unpopular. Because even though, again, not the biggest, not the strongest, not the fastest, they knew that when I felt right, they, I wasn't going to back down regardless of the consequences. And there were a handful of times that that didn't end well, but the bullying stopped. Not proud of it, part of growing up, but yet you realize that there are costs, there are consequences, even when you know what you're doing is exactly what you should be doing, and even know, knowing that what you are saying is exactly what you should be saying. And it's those life lessons that we take when we're younger. And I pray that a lot of you didn't have to experience them. However, I did. And we take it into our adulthood. And we take it to the people who we affiliate and associate with, that we worship with, that we commune with. We take it and teach those things to our children. That right is right. And oftentimes, 
it's not easy. And even still, other times, it can have consequences. Jesus has just empowered the twelve to go out and to cure the sick, to heal the blind and the crippled, even to raise the dead. And then in today's text, he says, but expect this in my name. Now, that had to come as a bit of a shock, wouldn't you think? I mean, who's going to get mad and persecute somebody that's out healing everybody? How could the good news be so offensive to people that they would persecute the disciples? And yet that's exactly what Jesus was preparing them for because it was that message, it was that good news that ultimately the Romans and the Jewish leaders and everybody else hung our Savior on a cross. We did that. Humanity did that. Because the message shook the status quo. The message divided families. And I know a little bit about that. Personally, it does. And yet this is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to take us to a place where we know that we need to preach from heavenly things and not try to appease or, be, or always be liked where the world is concerned because the world, the devil, and our sinful selves will always lead us astray. So it becomes a hard message. It becomes a very, very hard message. The difference in this message today, and this is the one point that I really, really want to drive home. There are times that we look at the gospel as good news, and yet the good news contains lines. It contains boundaries. It contains those things that point to our sinful, broken nature and drive us back to the good news and to the cross. And these things are there for our physical well-being here and our spiritual well-being to come. Make no mistake, everything that you see about you will come to an end. And that includes you and I. And it's hard to say, but it's life. But as Jesus says, don't worry about the one that can just kill the body. Worry about the one that can kill both body and soul. Stand firm in the gospel. Stand firm in that promise of Christ, take the gospel for what it is and something to be held and something to be abided by. But when you share that with people, this is the biggest difference between how I believe it should be approached and the way the world we live in approaches far too many things. And that is simply this. You've heard me use this term often. And I will always use this term wherever appropriate. And that is the speaking to someone, especially when you disagree, in loving truth. If we look back at our Savior, if you even want to call it a lapse, you might say that he kind of lost his temper a little when he threw the money changers out of the temple. But aside from that, he never raised his voice. What he taught, what he said, was out of sincere concern for the person sitting in front of him. The multitudes that came to hear him preach in the hillside, the woman at the well, all of these things go on, and yet it was things that would save them, heal them in here. Never divisive. Never in anger, never in judgment, just simply spoken out of sincere concern for the person standing in front of him. And that is how we are called to hold on to the gospel and to share the gospel as well. That there's plenty of good news in there to go around, and yet there are things that are hard. And these things will divide families. 
They will make a difference between son and daughter. They have. They will continue to do so. And it's yet these things that we are called to hold on to and to cherish and to share in loving truth out of sincere concern for those among us. That's our call. You know, to be Christian isn't always easy. And it's not supposed to be. It certainly wasn't easy for Jesus. And it certainly wasn't easy for his disciples. We often talk about this. All but one, John, was martyred. Everything that Jesus said in this text came true for each and every one of them, even in John's life, although he did ultimately die of old age. This is the blessing, and yet the weight of who we are. But remember that in and through this, we are heeding the call of the one who keeps body and soul and who lifts that up in the promise of eternal life. So make no mistake, Jesus is preparing them for a ministry to come, and it's the same ministry that we face in this world today. That we can differ, that we can explain things, but we're called to do that in such a way that we're concerned about each and every person we talk to. That's the burden and the gift that our Lord Jesus gives us in this text. And as Paul writes, our life and our salvation are in his hands, regardless of the consequences of it. We don't crucify anybody else anymore. Okay? But just remember what it cost our Savior. And he did that for you and for me once for all. And this is the good news. This is God's grace. This is what we have to share. I pray that your lives and that your words and that your actions as we go forward reflect exactly that. Amen. Our hymn of the day, Will You Come and Follow Me, ELW 798. And again, we will sing all five verses, and I ask you to stand as you are comfortable.
Let us now confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. As we offer our prayers and petitions, we ask that thy will be done. Each petition will end with, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, receive our prayer. Lord, thank you for all the blessings you provide that we often take for granted. Our health, our families, our safety, our food and homes, and the beauty of your creation that we, that we, that we see around us every day. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the rain that you have brought our way, and we pray that the fires that are affecting our air quality will be put out and dissipate the smoke that affects those with health issues. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for our people, our leaders, and our country, that we will turn to you during these challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, comfort and protect us from the daily issues we encounter, including illness, family problems, work issues, or other daily stresses. Help us to know that you are there at our side. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, strengthen and comfort those we have listed in our bulletin, and we now lift those in our hearts, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, help us to help others in our community who are suffering or in need. Give us the wisdom and fortitude to share the good news and hope that we and hope that we have through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for this church that you will guide us in the future to worship, follow, and serve you. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, help us to look forward to the day when you return to redeem us and restore all things. Receive our prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Lord Jesus, Remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. All has been made ready. All are welcome. Our Lord and Savior invites us to come. Please be seated. <laughs>
invite you to stand as you are coming. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayer. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our sending hymn for today, Let All Things Now Living, ELW 881. to God.